What's up guys, Luke here, back again with another episode of Questions and Answers. This is your chance to ask questions in the community post, and I'll answer them a few days later in a video. Everyone that asks a question gets a shout out, and I'll do my best to answer it. These videos tend to run a little long, so I wanna get started right away. Like and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Our first question of the day is from a good friend of the channel, Chad's Money Minutes. Chad wants to know if I have any thoughts of some type of creator meetup centered around redemptions. He also wants to know how to get approved for the Capital One Venture X. He's not alone there. First things first, let me officially announce the Points and Miles Creator Meetup September 2nd on the Las Vegas Strip. Now, details are still being worked out but I'm inviting several credit card and travel creators to be part of it. Chad, this is your official invitation. We absolutely need you in on this. This is Labor Day weekend in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This would be a great time for everyone to meet up, creators and subscribers, and we can talk about everything points, miles, credit cards, and travel related. The best thing is, Chad, if no one else shows up, we'll still be able to hang out and we'll be in Vegas. I'll have more details soon, but I've already reached out to a few creators and I'll let them confirm with their audiences when they think it's a good idea to do so. Can't wait to see everyone there. A second question about Capital One. It seems like a few YouTube videos have everyone worried about ever getting approved for the VentureX. Here's what I have to say about it. I didn't apply for the VentureX. I product changed from a Capital One Quicksilver. So there is a technique for those that are already customers of Capital One. The second thing is just apply. Sometimes you have to risk it for the biscuit. Getting turned down is all part of the game. Just like high school guys. Another friend of the channel, Manny Covington, asked a really good question. If I had to live in another country, where would I live? Well, the only time I really considered this was years ago when I was in the Navy. I wanted to have my last duty station in Spain so when I retired, I could just stay there. I really loved Spain when I was a young man. Now, I still think if I lived in another country, it would be somewhere in the European Union, which I guess is a cop-out because it would be several different countries. Because if I had to live in another country, I would likely be fairly nomadic, but mostly stay in Europe. He also asked if I'm going to be chasing airline status in the future. The answer to that is an emphatic no. I'm not interested in airline status. I think it's a better idea for me to just book first in business class when I want to. And right now I really want to fly as many different airlines as possible in the next couple years. Now with American Airlines, I may maintain gold status or something similar because it is so easy to do just using their shopping portal. PG asked if I ever thought about just using a hotel card for all purchases. Well. PG, I have done that temporarily. I hold the Hilton Surpass card, and when I got it, I use it exclusively until I hit the $15,000 spend and got the free night cert. I don't think I could do that all year just because my travel is so all over the place, and I think I can do much better earning transferable currencies. I could actually see me at some point doing just the opposite, and not having any co-branded cards at all. Isaac Moorman asked if I recommend the Venture X right after Chase 524. Isaac, I'll do you one better. If you're going to be a traveler, go ahead and get the Venture X before all that. This will run contrary to what everyone else teaches or says, but if you want the card, apply. Your 524 status won't be ruined by adding one card, and you really only need three Chase cards to start out anyway. Capital One Venture X needs to be an early game play, not a late game play. So go get it. It's a great card. I will leave a link in the description. Now you have to realize I play this game a little more aggressively than most folks. So my advice is always going to be just apply. Next up, we have Mr. William Pickett. He's asking about the time I was bomb void. I'm not sure if I ever shared this story, but I went to the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin in Orlando. I had my son with me, I think at the time he was five. He had a fairly common children's accident one night, so I stripped his bed and asked the front desk if they could have housekeeping come up and remake his bed while we went to Disney World for the day. The lady at the front desk told me to ball up the sheets and throw them in the middle of the hallway. Now, anyone who was a parent can probably see that that's not really the best idea to do when a child has an accident. It's not something they're super proud of. So I just left the sheets inside the room 
And when we came back to the room, his bed was not made at all. Housekeeping just threw a bunch of sheets on the top of the bed. Now, this is a full service hotel, right? I went down and spoke to the front desk and they really did not care at all. She said the housekeeper most likely got called to an emergency and then forgot where the room was. Like she's an EMT or the, the hotel physician. This was one of those things that looking back, it wasn't a huge deal, but at the time I was angry. The main thing was we were being ignored and I even contacted Marriott and got absolutely no response. My experience when something goes wrong has been completely different with Hilton. And that's one reason why I maintain loyalty with the Hilton brand. Would I stay at the same hotel again? Yeah, if I could get a deal. I understand stuff happens, and this was during a time when people weren't working, so I can let it slide now. Gregory Luna asks if I'm ever going to visit Australia. Gregory, I'll be honest, I won't be able to do that trip anytime soon. I work so much and my family is so busy, most of my trips are very, very short, two and three nights, and I think Australia requires at least 10 days. So if I go, it will be at least six years from now. So now it's not something I'm even looking at. Next question comes from John Baker. John wants to know the best cards for bonuses for the most number of hotel stays. John, right now, I don't think anyone can beat the ultimate rewards bonuses on the Chase Inc. cards. Get as many 90,000 point bonuses as you can and use those UR points for stays. Isaac Carwile wants to know what card I'm looking forward to getting in 2023. He also wants to know the most overrated and most underrated cards. Well, Isaac, right now I'm not interested in any new cards. I have everything booked for 2023, so I need some time to see what my life is gonna look like at the end of the year. If I had to answer the question though, I'd give you a really boring answer, the Chase Freedom Flex. And this one may ruffle some feathers. Most overrated card in the game, in my opinion, City Custom Cash. Come on guys, 25 bucks a month does not deserve this much hype. Most underrated, I've said this several times, US Bank Cash Plus, two 5% categories for easy cash back, but no hype. Nick Mulligan has another question about the Capital One Venture X. This is what I'll say about the card. It's a great card that you'll keep for as long as you're traveling, so I say get it. There are five cards in that 524 scenario. Just get the Capital One Venture X. If you're already mid to late in the game, apply anyway. Who cares if you're not approved? Again, I'll leave a lucky link below, but just know it's a regular link. I'm not guaranteeing you any luck. Citizen Zero One was declined for the Capital One Venture X. Here's the deal, guys. Capital One prefers customers that are less than excellent, credit-wise. They don't like customers that may be less profitable. You know, most of us with 20 cards in 0% utilization, I've been declined for cards in the past. I move on and apply for other great cards. Citibank will not give me the premier card no matter how many times I apply. Super awesome elite member Robert Dorf wants to know if he can get good value transferring Hilton honors points to airlines. And also, is there a class above first on the international carriers? Those are really cool questions. I would never consider transferring hotel points to airlines unless I was completely finished with that hotel. I don't think it's a very good value, but I can understand a couple instances that might make sense. Topping off that airline currency because you need to book a trip right now, or you want to completely boycott that hotel for the rest of your life. As far as your other question, there seems to be a few products that could be considered next level. Air France has the Le Premier, which is something I believe you can only book if you hold some level of status with Air France. You have Singapore Airlines, Singapore Suites. You have ANA's The Room or The Suite, whatever they're calling it now. Emirates offers a seat class that comes with a bar. So I'm not sure if there's officially higher than first class products, but there are definitely certain products that seem to be life-changing over the top experiences. If anyone can think of any others, please list them below. Maybe we'll do a video on them. CJ Junkie wants to know the best Marriott P1, P2 setup. He mentions the Ritz card, but in my opinion, that card is just a chore to even get. And although I understand it's a great card, I think for Marriott, the best strategy is the one that gets you the highest 
elite status quickest. For me, that could actually be the American Express route with the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant and I would pair that with the Marriott Business Card. If you really wanted to employ a player too, maybe have them go for the Ritz Card to help out. And at the same time, guys, I'm just going off the top of my head because I don't use any of the Marriott cards. Long time friend of the channel, Jimmy James, asked what my favorite airport and airport lounge is. Jimmy, the coolest and best airport I've ever visited is Hamad International Airport in Doha, Qatar. That place is unreal and obviously, they have some serious over-the-top lounges. For business class, the Al Morjan is completely awesome. For next level stuff, the Al Swafi first class lounge is just unreal. If you mean domestic, I'm gonna say the Capital One lounge at DFW. IAD, Washington Dulles, but maybe that's just because the last time I was there, I was the only person in the building, it seemed, or at least close to it. Second is probably DFW because my son really likes the outside train and you can see all the American Airlines planes. NS actually asks a tough question. Would I rather splurge using points on a flight or a hotel? That's really tough and I think my answer could actually change every trip. Domestically, that's easy, it's the hotel. Domestic first class is not anything special most of the time, but a huge suite with two bathrooms on the beach is a big deal no matter what country it's in. Now, take my trip to Prague, Czech Republic. I'm actually splurging on the Air France business class flight tickets and staying at a relatively modest Hilton. Either way, it's this points and miles game that lets us splurge in the first place. NS, do yourself a favor, just earn tons of points and miles and splurge on both. You don't need to pick one. Stay Mad is flying to Greece for a Kumite karate match. What's the best way to get there? Stay mad, check out my Maximum Value Redemption series. I actually have a Greece redemption in there that could be right up your alley, but Greece is definitely a tricky one. Most people I talk to say just get to Europe as cheaply as possible and then find out how to get to Greece. But if you wanna go in style, there is an Emirates option and I have a video on that. Germanantor24 has 262,000 Hilton Honors points and wants some recommendations on where to redeem them in the US. My surface thoughts are Conrad, Fort Lauderdale, you can thank me later. Brian Holloway is asking if getting an airline card is worth it. If you watch my airline theme videos, you'll see I've tried the whole loyalty status thing and as I stand right now, I'm not interested in being loyal to any airline or renewing or even acquiring any airline cards. I'm sure they might work for some folks, but I'll stick with transferable currencies and do the extra work to get the most value from them. But if you already fly Delta, for instance, then it may benefit you to get that high bonus right now. I'll leave a link in the description for the Delta Reserve card. That is all our questions for today, guys. If you like this series, like the video and tell your friends. I'll be reminding everyone to come to Las Vegas Labor Day weekend for a very special casual meet and greet and hopefully I'll be able to put some names to that event very soon. If you have time, check out my links in the description and if you've stayed around all the way to the end, I appreciate you and I thank every single one of you.